Okay, y'all, this is Tony Fergie. Welcome back to my channel. Let me thank all the subscribers, the ones that just subscribed, the one that subscribed this week, last week, all the weeks. Now, as you guys know, I'm new to YouTube, so keep them coming. Keep sharing, keep commenting, and keep, I'm going to say commenting. Ain't that something? You know you could take Jamaicans out Jamaica, but you can't take their accent out of them. You see that? I say commenting. Comment. <laughs> y'all... <laughs> It's going to come out. I'm sorry. Now, I'm talking about this sister right here. She's Jamaican. I, I don't want to give y'all no heads up. Watch her story. Y'all, listen to her story. I don't want to I don't want to speak too much on it and then give it away. Listen to her story and get back. Hello, everyone. It's me, Sherelle Rose Green, and I'm here to share my story. I know a lot of y'all have heard this story over and over again, but I promise the Lord that if he come through for me, I'm going to tell my story every chance I get. Guys, a few years ago, my mother passed away. Guys, I never have papers. I was in the country for 30 years on documents, all right? So when my mother passed away, I was so devastated, very sad. And I was like, I want to see my mom. Any means necessary, I'm going to see my mom. So, someone gave me papers. So I went and I saw my mother for the last time. You know, and um, I came back. When I came back to the United States, my father said to me, he knows of someone that use the same papers and get a United States passport. So I was never thinking. I came in the country at a very young age. So I wanted so bad to be legal in the country. So I went and right after, about two weeks later, I heard my phone tapped and I'm like, something ain't right. My phone is open, something, somebody's listening to my conversation. That was the feds. They, they were listening to my conversation, all right? So anyway, I just felt like I was closed in. That was something was going to happen to me. I didn't know what it was. I couldn't put my fingers on it. But I knew that I felt every time I walk on the street, I'm looking behind me like I was locked up somewhere. But I just couldn't put my fingers on it. So one day, a family member called me and said, Cheryl, Feds is looking for you. I said, what? Feds? When you hear the word Feds, people, I was so, like, frightened. So anyway, I left my apartment because I said to myself, they ain't going to catch me. So I am going to be a fugitive because Mina, you ain't going to catch me. Anyway, I went and I go stay with somebody. And I remember one night I, I, I got the vision that says, investigation looking for me. So I left that where I was staying. And right after I left, there go the feds going to that particular place where I was looking for me. So I was, I, 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 I was hiding. I'm not going to lie to you. I was hiding for a while because I was like, oh my God, feds? I've never been locked up before. And I left my apartment. And one day, people, I got a vision that says, I heard a voice says to me, go back to your apartment and clean up your house. And I did what the voice told me to do. And when I go back, people, and I clean up my house and I clean from the crevice to the corner. When I came back, I had was talking to this guy at the time, I was sitting down watching TV. I heard a loud knock on my door. When I looked through the peephole, I know it was them. I started to cry right away. And when I opened up, when I looked to the peephole, it was 10 U.S. Marshal, federal agents. And I opened the door and they handcuffed me and showed me my picture. I said, yeah, that's me. They took me down to, they put me in an unmarked car, took me down to Broward um, Boulevard at this federal jail. They, they fingerprinted me and took me upstairs. I cried so hard. I just lost my son from domestic violence when I was nine months pregnant. I was beaten. You know what I'm saying? And my placenta was ripped. You know what I'm saying? And I, 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 I went through a devastated time in my life. And my mother passed away. So everything was going through my mind. And I'm like, I know I'm incarcerated. People, I'm telling you, I almost lost my mind. I was on the top bunk and I was laying on my back. And I'm telling you, my pillow was soaked with tears. And I was sitting there and I heard this loud voice shook me and said, everything was going to be all right. Everything is going to be all right. And I'm like... I look around, I see nobody. And I'm like, I said to my inmate, I said, come here. She was on the other side. And I said, come here. And I said, did you say something to me? And she said, no. And I, I 
realized it was the voice of Jesus saying to me not to worry. But of course, my faith had gotten weak. I was there and there was a feds that kind of knew me. And he said, I'm going to give you a, a, a referral. To, um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to let you go to Miami. Holding cell where people was holding to go to prison. But I wasn't going to prison. And I went there. It was clean. They give you good food. You know, and I went there. And as soon as I walked in, I saw this guitar. And I started to sing. I pick up the guitar and I started to play the guitar. And I was like, I am praying, blessed Savior, to be more and more like thee. I am praying that thy spirit like a dove may restore me. Thou who knowest of my weakness. My name is Sherelle Rose Green from the beautiful parish of St. Catherine, Jamaica. I know a lot of y'all heard that, 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 that um, testimony and don't know the face behind that voice is me. All right, guys? But guys, I'm telling you, when I sang that song, I mean, the inmates, the police officers started to cry. I mean, soul got saved into that jailhouse. So sometimes God put us in a position to recognize him. I never prayed so much. God set me up. And you guys might wonder, oh, God set her up. He set me up for greatness. Because God allowed me to get caught. Because he know that he was going to bring me out. He knew that if I was hiding, I would not be legal today in the country. I was fighting deportation for a very long time. For 15 years, undocumented for 30 years. All right, guys. When I did my time in federal jail, guys, six weeks, fed, um, immigration came and got me. I went to immigration jail. A lot of persons were in there. Jamaicans, Trinidadians, Bahamian was waiting to get deported. They go in front of the judge. The judge denied their, their bond. And they're saying to me, oh, you expect to get bond when we have papers and we get denied. I said, but God told me he was going to get me out of here. People, I got a bond. I went in front of the judge and right away I got a bond and I came out. Two years later, I got pregnant with my son, the one I have now. And my, somebody called me and said, Cheryl, police looking for you. I said, for what? I just went to jail two years ago. They told me that the feds charged me for the passport. And then the state charged me for the driver's license. So they came and they got me. I have the big bell in front of me. And I was crying so hard. I said, not again. So they took me to Borough General to get a clearance. And they took me to Pampona Jail in the pregnancy ward. I didn't eat for weeks. All I ate was orange. And I did my time there again in three weeks. And immigration came and got me again for the second time. When I went to immigration for the second time again, I, I see some numbers on the wall. I'm going to call them and I say, listen, I'm going to lose my baby. I'm not feeling good. And by the time I pick up the phone to call them that next number, I felt a gush of blood run down my inner thigh. I was started to bleed and bleed and bleed. And they rushed me to the hospital next door to the immigration jail. My son wasn't moving. So they sent me home on the recognizance. We are after checking with immigration every three months. And I did that for five long years. So guys, when you see me, glory man, leave me alone. When I love to hear people's story. Y'all love to hear people's sad story, but but you don't love to see their glory. You understand what I'm saying? And after all these guys, they denied, they denied me. They deny and deny and I fight and I fight and I win. Because the Lord told me that he was going to come through. And I remember one day I called the phone and he says, you are denied and you have 30 days to leave the country. And I started to cry and I said, nah, give up. I'm a fight again. And I fight. And I remember I came back to Florida. I was in Jersey at the time at a concert when I heard the news. And I came back to Florida and I, and I pack up my stuff. And while I was packing my stuff, I started to cry and I said, Lord, are you there? I need a word. I need a word. And I heard the voice says, you are approved. But my faith was not that strong. I packed my stuff and I moved away to Pennsylvania to stay with a friend of mine. And I was there and I was like counting all the days because they gave me 30 days. And they treat me bad people They treat because they know my situation. I was walking on eggshells and 30 days, 29. And when it comes to the 29 day, my lawyer called and said, you are approved. So let me tell you something. God set me up. For a greater comeback. My setback was for a greater comeback. But I'm here to tell you. If you're fighting any kind of deportation. Or whatever you're fighting. Domestic violence. God is on the job. It might seem far-fetched. But it's not true with you yet. Guys. I've been through a lot. I've been through hard times. I've been through ridicules. I've been through backlash. I've been through so much. 
and God take me out of it. A lot of y'all don't like to see people glory, but y'all like to hear their story. God is amazing. God is amazing, guys. Stay strong and just be still and know that he is God. I've been through deportation, living in abandoned building with rats and moles and roaches, walking the street of sunrise because people kicked me out of them house. I didn't have no place to go, but I, 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 I God sustained me. God kept me and I'm so glad. And now I am a United States citizen. I can fly. I can go anywhere I want to go. Now you understand why I said I did not want to give anything away. Ain't that something? There is so much people that can tell their stories and move anybody. But please allow this her story to encourage you, to build you up, to just, no matter where you are in life, celebrate. No matter where you are in life, give thanks. No matter where you are in life, just know it's a stepping stone for where you want to be. And no matter who don't celebrate you, celebrate yourself. Don't allow because someone said something or someone did something or the people that you think or whatever you've been through is your been through so celebrate your breakthrough don't matter who want to celebrate with you if you have to buy one party hat and one slice of cake and have one glass of wine celebrate with yourself i'm telling y'all now if all of us could tell our stories, ta, huh, we would prevent generations from coming up and being where we are today. But because we stand nice and tall and we stand with a smile on our face, people don't see the unseen scars that we carry. And we all have them because nobody is perfect. Now, I hope her video encourages you. I hope it blesses you. And I hope you'll comment, not comment. You know we are the same thing. Share, subscribe, and come back again because y'all know Tony appreciates y'all and love y'all.